the consequences of climate change are already evident today. If we want to limit the effects, we'll need to reduce global CO2 emissions drastically by at least a quarter. Politicians and climate experts want to make this goal official at the 2012 UN Climate Change Conference in Qatar. But the conference itself will also produce tons of CO2. So how climate damaging is a climate summit? Some 25,000 people are expected to attend the conference in Qatar. Most of them will fly there, generating around 130,000 tons of CO2. That means each participant will generate as much carbon dioxide as a resident of Mali produces in five years. In Doha, the participants will take buses, taxis and limousines to the conference centre. The city is planning to use energy-efficient vehicles, but they'll still produce an estimated 200 tonnes of CO2. And large amounts of electricity will be needed during the 12-day conference itself, for lighting and air conditioning, for example. That's another 3,500 tonnes of CO2. Then there are the refreshments served during breaks, and in the evening the participants will dine in Doha's restaurants and hotels. Meat, coffee, wine, it all has to be produced and prepared, and that adds up to another 800 tonnes of CO2. The overnight stays at the hotel with air conditioning, hot water for showers and fresh towels every day, that's another 1,800 tonnes. Summing up, the 12-day climate summit in Qatar will cause a whopping 136,300 tonnes of CO2. That's about the same amount that the mid-sized city of Bochum in Germany will generate during the same period of time. And we shouldn't expect much by way of new ideas on climate protection from the conference hosts. The tiny desert nation of Qatar tops the world in per capita CO2 emissions.